you know, you remember when they used to target 2% and that clearly, according to their data, wasn't working. And then they started talking about, well, an average of 2%. And when they came out with that, what I knew was they were preparing for much higher inflation and we'll use that, but it's an average. Uh, so we were expecting it and that's exactly what we're seeing now, right? The markets are concerned about the 10 year uh, got up to what? 1.75 today, right. which doesn't sound that high, but it was only 0.66, you right. know? I mean, historically not high, but it's a 14 month uh, high, so. Ex Exactly. Right. And, you know, and what do they say? The Fed is saying, no, it's because the economy is just growing so well um, when they're pumping so much money into the system. So, yeah, I, th I think they could be losing uh, control. So does this tie in? Because how do they regain control? What what tools do they have in the toolbox to do so here, Lynette? Just buying more product, buying more treasury bonds. But you know, buying to push the yields down, okay. yield curve control. And that's really, that's the problem. They're actually out of tools. Uh, yeah. One of my very favorite pieces that the, I, and I've read a lot of them, <laughs> that the IMF or, ever did was 2015, how to break below the lower zero bound. And in that, they showed us a very simple technique uh, that would take the that would get us the public to volunteer the cash and actually I would say that that's it's been going on for a long time but I think that that really ramped up in 2020 remember how dirty cash is with the coronavirus though I've never heard of anybody catching coronavirus from using cash but the way that they said they wanted to do it was through the retail uh, stores so, and I can tell you that I see a number of retail stores that say no cash, debit or credit only. And so that gets us to volunteer. The store itself has no real idea of how they're executing the Federal Reserve's plan or any of the central bankers plan, because if you read their documents, they say this consistently that they want distance between their policy and how that policy is introduced to the public so that the public doesn't really know that it's central bank policy. You know, here's the problem for, for the central banks. Typically when they create a policy and they use the commercial banks to execute that policy, it takes about 18 months to run through the system to see if their policy worked or not. But if we're on a completely cashless electronic system they have basically instant real-time data. Are we spending enough, right? Because we're a consumer-driven economy. So the consumer has to spend. And if we're not spending enough, if we're trying to save because maybe we're not comfortable with our income coming in, you know, we're, we're uncertain. These days, there are a lot of people that are uncertain about their future income. So we see the savings rates go up but then they're not out there spending. So if we have no cash to hold principal, because it doesn't hold purchasing power, but it does hold principal, nominally anyway, uh, then they can simply push a button and instantaneously you can watch any money that you have in the bank start to evaporate from negative rates. I, I'm not absolutely able to say as a technician at this point that the hyperinflation has begun, but, um, you know, Wall Street certainly saying that inflation has begun mm -hmm. and we are witnessing, particularly with the current stimulus bill, a form of UBI, particularly, it looks the most like it in the childcare tax credit where they will send you a monthly check starting in July. So, you know, UBI, people feel confident. They are not going to save because of negative rates. So it's a combination, but yeah, absolutely is set up to hyperinflation or high, I mean, and you know, I, I've listened to a number of people and they go, well, what about deflation? Well, we are fighting deflation because these asset values 
are in, in almost all cases, except for gold and silver, are so severely overvalued and all they can do is pump more fiat into the system so that they stay reflated. There's only one way to fight deflation, that's with inflation. The ETFs are a trust and the change in the SLV that they made recently because of what happened last June, July, which was, you know, a lot of people were rushing into the, the silver complex and the gold complex, actually, that hasn't really stopped. But SLV is unable to create baskets out of physical silver because supply is so tight. And they had to change their prospectus to reflect that. Oh, well, that depends on your personal circumstance. So for example, I can speak, you know, to myself and, and you should know too, I've been doing this on some level since I was about 10 years old <laughs> in, in all different areas. So, and I'm 66, so I've seen and lived through a lot of history, including a monetary regime shift. So that definitely does color my view. For me personally, I think that everybody needs to be absolutely as independent and self-sufficient as possible. So I have my mantra, food, water, energy security, barterability, which for me is silver, wealth preservation, which for me is gold, community and shelter, because no matter what's happening in the economy, these are the things that we need that to sustain a reasonable standard of living. So I make sure that all of that is covered. And then what am I going to do? Buy stocks, buy things that run counterparty risk when I am three gazillion percent certain that we are already walking through a reset. So, you know, I'm all in, I mean, I'm all in, but I have a higher level of comfort than most. And right now I want to be outside the system. And a lot of, you know, a lot of clients at ITM, they have Bitcoin, but that for me is more speculative. I've been watching it since 2009, came out in January of 2009. Uh, there was, I've read the 1996 NSA paper on how to create cryptocurrencies. So this is not really a surprise. My opinion is that uh, these were created to get us used to this digital system. And so I would imagine that at some point I will go into it myself, but I'm going to wait and see what happens until the dust settles, because I know that gold has a proven track record. Cryptocurrencies do not have a proven track record yet. 